All right, so come over here, guys. I want to show you something. This is going to be probably the best bicep video you've ever seen, including all the ones I've already done on this channel. So if you've been trying to build your biceps, I'm sure at some point you're using some version of an easy bar curl, right? You've approached a rack like this at the gym, you've grabbed it, and you started curling away. How you grab this thing, though, may or may not lead to more or better results because the way these bars are actually set up is that they're set to kind of stay in one position here on the rack. They all fall down into one position. That's because of the way the bar is engineered. The center of mass keeps it like this. The problem is, you look at this, it's got two grip options here. You've got these inside grips, and you've got the outside grips. And a lot of us don't like to grab the narrow grip because it doesn't really feel comfortable when we're curling like this. So we'll grab the more comfortable shoulder width. But if you grab it like this, look what happens. As the bar is set up, I grab it, I'm actually doing something that's less optimal for my biceps. Why? Because I've actually grabbed it from a less supinated position. In other words, I'm grabbing it from more of a pronated position. You can see that the angle of my hand, when I put this down, is like this, not turned over. So what you have to do if you want to get more out of this is to actually understand that and then flip that bar over before you grab it. So that when I grab this outside handle now, you can see that the hand is having to be supinated more, right? This would be that kind of flat position. I can supinate more to grab those same grips and then get in this position to get a lot more bicep contraction and not let the brachialis sort of dominate the flexion of the elbow to bring this bar up to the top. Now, you probably see me also doing something else that I do automatically that I've shared with you before, and that's the real desire and need to keep the wrist somewhat bent backwards at the top of a curl. It's essential to an optimally performed bicep curl. Why? Because of anatomy. We know that an accessory motion to supination is wrist extension, and this is why that happens. So if I was gonna just lay this in here like it's in my body, you can see that this is the radius and this is the ulna, right? And my hand is pretty much in this position. If I wanna pronate like this, then this radius has to rotate around the ulna, which doesn't really move, right? The ulna is kind of fixed. But we know that if I wanna get back into this position and supinate and continue to go that way, that I need to have this extension at the wrist. Why? Because if I have a flexed wrist here and this tries to open up, you'll see that it's actually getting blocked by the bones that are in there, right? The bones of the carpal bones of the wrist don't have freedom of movement there to allow for that. So if I can get into extension, all of a sudden, that can open up a lot easier. So it's really important that we have that ability to do that. So how else would this apply? Because it's not just that exercise you're gonna do. I wanna make this an all-encompassing video for you so you get this right every single time. So if you were to go do, let's say, a cable curl, there's a few other benefits that actually come in play here that help you out. So again, if I were just to curl up like this, I'm going to limit how much I can get in terms of supination. I want those wrists bent back for a couple reasons. Because number one, as the wrists go back, I'm actually going to see, you can see the elbow coming in tight to my body. I'm able to get the elbow underneath. Because I'm going to show you something in a second here when we get to the straight bar that illustrates exactly why you need to get this right. But I want this so that I can get underneath. And when I'm underneath, I'm getting more of that supination by getting that wrist bent back, but also I'm keeping the force on the biceps with the cable. If I curl in here like this, the line of resistance is this line right here, this cable line. And look at its relationship to my forearms. Right? It's, it's approaching parallel. And we know that in order to keep the force on the muscle we're trying to work, we want it to be more perpendicular to the moving segment, in this case, the forearm. So if I bend those wrists back a bit, look at the relationship now. That cable is more perpendicular to my forearm, and right away I feel a lot more tension on the biceps, even at the top of this exercise. And the more I can kind of keep that by keeping the wrist bent back, I have more tension here on the biceps. So reason number two of why you want to get some of that wrist extension here as you come up. But over here at the straight bar, you might be thinking, well, how, the, how do you do that? Because you really, again, you're even more limited than you are with the cable because gravities are acting straight up and down here, not the line of force being the cable. So here's what we do. Pulling out all the stops, guys. Raymond, muscle marker, everything. This area right here is where you want to direct your force when you're curling with a straight bar. Why? Because it's going to encourage supination and it's going to get the elbows tucked into the sides. How? If 
I grab this straight bar here and I focus on pushing through this part of the hand just like that, then what that does is it first of all prevents the elbows from drifting, which just takes away some of the work of the biceps, but it actually, by pushing through that inside portion of the hand, right there you can see the bar actually being pushed through there, I can almost supinate my hand into a straight bar. So not even being limited anymore by the fact that I don't have any manipulation or orientation of the bar that allows for more supination. So I'm able to come down, up, push through that inner portion of the hand, almost allow for supination in a bar that was once thought to be unable to allow for that because of its fixed nature. So I'm able to kind of do that. And again, as in order to do that, I got to get the elbow underneath for leverage. So it discourages any flaring of the elbow because it has to come underneath to push through this portion of the hand. And then finally, if I go over to a dumbbell, I've shown you guys this before, but again, it bears repeating because if you understand the whole concept, you're going to get this right every time. And if you struggle to grow your biceps, you're going to start growing them. So when I grab the dumbbells, I told you about an offset grip. If you take a grip all the way at the end of the dumbbell, the top end of the dumbbell here, just like that, and then you curl and you make sure that the dumbbell is level at the top, or if anything, pinky side higher, you're going to make sure that you're getting the biceps to do more of the work because the biceps are the supinator. It's the differentiator between, let's say, the brachialis and the biceps is their ability to do supination. And how do I know that? Well, quick little story. You probably have been watching for a while here and wondering why I've had this brace on or this little sleeve. It's because I've had a bicep tear. So if I actually come down here, you can see the difference, right? The fullness in here and what's lacking in here. But when I had the injury, when I was walking my son into school and he slipped on the ice and I went to go grab him, I had to assess what was going on. The first thing I did was look at my ability to move into supination, not just flexion. Because if I, I could go like this and still see a bicep, but not really know whether it's torn or not, because I could carry the biceps along in elbow flexion and make it ball up, but not necessarily have it still be attached. So the way you test for that is you want to supinate. And you can see that when I supinate just the wrist here in the forearm, that I get good movement here. So I have supination capabilities. It is the differentiator between brachialis flexing the elbow and the biceps flexing the elbow. If you want to grow your biceps, learn from this injury, realize you need to get into supination. The best way to do that is to allow for it by getting some extension at the wrist and to keep those elbows as close to the body as possible. Guys, I hope you found the video helpful. If you're looking for more of these deep dives, leave your comments below. I'll do that. If you're looking for more bicep workouts and tips, you can find those over here. Make sure you click subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a video when we're putting out. See you soon.